Hello. Can anyone around here speak basketball? There it is. It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. We're going back to back. Welcome to the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Basketball Podcast. Podcast. I am your host, Freddie Rivas. And who, in goods, gods, graces, (laughs) are you, sir? I am the producer, Matt Duncan, here on the keys, working the knobs. How you doing, Fred? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm excited for the playoffs. Um, Oh, yeah. Yeah, how how are you? What's what's up? Oh, you know things are good. Uh, you know another day, another dollar, as they say. And yeah, mm-hmm. we're playing Brooklyn again, which I think uh, when I joined this podcast, they were playing Brooklyn in the first round. I think, and it was that that terrible sweep. I think uh, you'll have to go back to season two to see uh, yes. <laughs> to see how that went. But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's super weird to have sports in the middle of summer, but. Uh, also nice and needed, you know, in a way. Yeah, yeah. I'm watching a lot of sports yeah. all day, every day. Yeah, lots to watch. Um, Matt, you, let's get to the important stuff. Yes. Uh, COD, you know, a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff. Some big stuff on the, on, on, yeah. the, on the cusp. And we're not talking about the the stuff who helped Aaron Gordon in the dunk off, the Orlando <laughs> Magic mascot. Uh, no, we're talking about like like our, our links, our website, all, all this yes. uh all this important information, um, Matt. What what do you got to update people on? Okay, so you know I'm always telling you to go to dunkspodcast.com uh, to, to you know subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher and iHeartRadio mm-hmm. and Player FM and uh, you know you can listen to the episodes there. And you know this whole time we've been using dunkspodcast.com as a redirect, and it would go to dunkspodcast.wordpress.com because we had one of those free WordPress sites. But guys, we've moved up in the world. We no longer have that WordPress site that is uh, .wordpress.com. So now we're just dunkspodcast.com. It's going to go right wow. to that site. It's going to look exactly the same right now. Nothing's changed. You just might have to uh, clear out your 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 cache on your browser, but it should work flawlessly. But uh, dunkspodcast.wordpress.com no longer exists. Okay, so you, you will not be able you to hear go that, there. folks. Yeah, we have graduated <laughs> to the dot com world. Yeah, we're like, and you can check your uh, catchy. Uh, C- if you, catchy is that how you say yeah, it? C A. That's how you pronounce it. Yes. Really? C-A, no, I'm just kidding. It's cash. <laughs> cash. But uh, but when you said cash, catchy, I was like, clear out the cash. Yeah. yeah. People don't carry cash <laughs> during the pandemic. Um. But yes, yes. The C A C A C H E. That's your their internet stuff. So, yeah. Um. So clear that out clear because that you don't out. want it to. Yeah, you know, I got to sent to a WordPress for God's sakes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, we're still technically using WordPress. It's just, it's very confusing, but you know, dunkspodcast.com will take you there. It'll look exactly right off the, the same. top of this pod. Our goal was, <laughs> okay, I was talking to Matt. I'm like, let's confuse the yeah. shit out of everybody. <laughs> like, just uh, off the top, you know? It's really hard to not confuse people when you're talking technical stuff. Hey, you know? I'm confused like at the things I say. So. <laughs> Um, you know, just trying to live, live a good life here. Yeah. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, I brought this up, a, uh, maybe a month ago or so, uh, me and Caitlin, uh, we're trying to get onto the, um, my, my partner, we're trying to get onto the, uh, the food, food sharing, share. um, uh, kind of like groceries and stuff. And we got on, we've had it for a couple of weeks now. We're getting the, uh, smashing white supremacy box. Nice. So this is, uh, you know, black farms, black owned businesses, um, and uh, it's it's amazing. Uh, we made a bunch of like veggie casseroles. Uh, we have made um, a bunch of different like juices. Uh, we're getting a bunch of new different vegetables that we don't even know what they are. Uh, a bunch of corn, which we put on our grill. Uh, oh, yeah. So this is a, a nice, easy way to support uh, black businesses. Yeah. And um, it's also great and it's so healthy and it's like an amazing deal. Um so, you know, mm-hmm. we don't work for them. We're not getting advertising <laughs> money or anything like that. This is just a legit thing you should all do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So go do that. And uh, remember, defund the police. Uh, don't stop bothering your counselors, your mayor, uh, everyone. Um, and 
yeah, I think uh, I think we're good to get into the pod and start talking playoffs. Matt, if you feel like we're okay, please just say the words okay. Okay. All right, let's get started uh, and bring on some guests here. Um, Number one is is a longtime friend. Uh, he is an amazing free throw shooter in basketball. Um, he's a serious uh, serious XM's top comic forever um, because that's the way that that works uh, during pandemic times. He's hilarious. He's amazing. Uh, he's a basketball freak. Give it up for Adam Christie. <laughs> Adam, thanks for joining. Thanks for the close-up look to the camera lens. Right in my pores. Those of you not watching it on the Zoom, missing out on my horrible skin. <laughs> Adam has wonderful skin. Wonderful he looks skin. like he's been golfing every day of his life. Don't block me, Freddy. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, this is good. Good energy. Let's bring on guest number two. Um, she's done the pod, I think, a... a a healthy amount of times, maybe a handful, yeah. mm-hmm. somewhere in between well, a handful more. and a healthy amount of times. Mm-hmm. Hand to two hands, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, and and I don't know if she even likes this nickname, but you know her, you love her. She is the denim god. Give it up for Jess Nicolette. Yay! <laughs> What's up? That's your music? Thank Do you. Do you like it? I love it. I've always loved that. <laughs> I don't know if I can be called the denim god anymore. I closed my business, so I'm still earning money from it. So technically you can still go with it, but. No, that's good. If you're you know still what? earning money from we're, something, you're god level. Yeah. And you know, it's better than being like, she's an unemployed god. <laughs> so like, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of unemployment right now. So I feel like we're allowed to hang on to our previous jobs. Mine was like by choice. So I okay. can't really be like, oh, Corona. Like, this was way cheers, before cheers. Corona. But like, you know what? I'm in between acts. Fair enough. Next time I'll, int- I'll intro you as the jobless God. <laughs> yeah, that's how I, in between acts is how you're supposed to say things like that when you're like almost 40. Yeah. I have a question. I have a question for the room. Sure. Um, what is the, what material is, uh, the devil to the denim God? Oh, Ooh. Um, what, what was, what's the fallen angel? Corduroy? No, I love corduroy. <laughs> I would okay. say anything that's like polyester and has no breathability. Like Naga hide. Oh, so that's so th- Lucifer. The dark prince takes many forms and they don't breathe. <laughs> oh, I like that. So what it has a- nothing to do with stitching. It's all about like weather it breeze. It's thread count. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The devil <laughs> is in the thread count. The devil wears a three-piece polyester suit and it is stifling in there. Um, let's let's jump into some raptor stuff. Uh, I was gonna try and say uh the raptor wears a polyester suit, but no way. <laughs> that suit breathes for sure. Um, uh yeah, th- he his gets a pass. And I'm sure the whole tail is like an air conditioner. You know what I mean? Um, it's, a, it's a Dyson. He's walking around with a Dyson tail, I think. Uh, okay, Matt, if you got that Raptor sting, it's almost playoff time. So would you give it to me? When I say Bobby, you say Webster, Bobby. Webster. 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 <laughs> Someone's going to beat you up, Matt. Uh, One of these days, someone love that it's like, always so sloppy. Uh, here we are. We're we're at the goddamn playoffs. Uh, this is amazing, Adam. Let's jump right into it. Um, it was I think six years ago now, maybe five, 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 six years. Um, when uh, Masai came out to Jurassic Park and declared "fuck Brooklyn." Uh, do you feel like there's any carryover? from those five years or, you know, is it, do you have any feelings that are like fuck Brooklyn or you're kind of like this team is so shouldn't be here. <laughs> I mean, I've never been more excited for basketball to come back. And, and now I've never, I, I was, 
was like so excited and met, like this. And I feel like the first round of the playoffs, I've never felt this before in Raptors history, but this might be the first first round in Raptors history where I might read a book while watching the games. <laughs> wow. Um, I'll definitely be like cooking while the game is on a laptop or maybe like checking what's going on on the internet, but really going to be a boring series. So you're, you're watching Joe Harris and you're like, sorry, I agree with everything Ayn Rand is saying right now. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so you're just, yeah. Fair Listen, enough. God, God bless the denim. God blesses. Brooklyn, <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a slaughter. It's going to be bad. Jess, do you have any like fuck Brooklyn energy? Like, do you want to smote them for what they did to us? Like the Paul Pierce block or are you kind of like, it's just so far away. It's so far away. I kind of, I'm like, I don't, I, I don't, I just, I actually feel so bad for Brooklyn right now. Cause they're, it's like a tragic situation. It's, it's like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just like, you know what? I'm excited maybe for like the first time ever just to go for a sweep. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it feels like we're playing like a group of blind orphans. I just like, they're just, they're bad. Yeah. My, my follow-up was kind of about the sweep. Do you, how do you feel about the sweep, Jess? Do you feel like it's like we need it or is five games also fine? I think a gentleman sweep is probably fine. I listen, I'm like hoping for a sweep, but also as a Raptors fan, I'm like, nah, I don't know. They're going to drop one game. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, do we the have the killer one, instincts? Yeah. I think we do, but, um, I don't know. I, I, I hope that they don't go into it just thinking like, this is like a done deal. It's so easy and kind of like blow it. I feel like that's what Philly did last year. In the Philly, first Philly round. approached They played us. Brooklyn. No, oh, that's oh, right, they right. Brooklyn. Like they walked in and we're like, man, no big deal. Brooklyn won. And then, and then Philly played good. Yeah. You can't deceive yourself when you're playing a super shitty team. This is yeah. why all year I've been saying the second seed in the East is so important because no teams in the playoffs get a bye except one and two in the East. Yeah. Whoever the Lakers play, whoever the Clippers play is going to be so significantly better than the magic or the nets that it's going to affect their whole playoff run. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, I don't feel know, bad for them at all too. Cause it's like the hype train is coming like next year, buckle up. Cause the like Brooklyn true. nets hype train is going to be all over the place. Yeah, yeah. You know what? And maybe I'm a bit petty because I kind of pose this question with like, you know, being like a, in a nice way, but I think I do have a bit of fuck Brooklyn energy. Yeah. You know what? Maybe I'm getting there. I just, there's a part of me as a Raptor fan that, you know, I'm so okay. Or I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, Oh, I'm so overjoyed with our success. And, you know, me and Adam were talking about this the other day. We're kind of annoyed by, you know, Raptors fans being so hyper, like we're good. And, but, you know, so being so hyper concerned with every little, mm-hmm. you know, American slight when we have tons of our own coverage is, is a bit annoying. But I do like the idea of like beating everyone that's ever beat us. Yeah. Like just a for revenge, the sake of like overall numbers. Streak. Yeah. yeah, like I think we've lost to the, you know, we lost to the Vince Carter Nets, right? And then we've also yeah. lost to the Brooklyn Nets. So I think it would be cool to just even the score a little bit. And we've never had a franchise sweep, so that would be nice. Yeah. Uh, okay, Jess, let me stick with you on the, um, I've been talking about this all year, uh, but I think it kind of just got a lot more interesting, especially with this Bucks game, and, you know, Boucher and Thomas going off. Uh, yeah. I think Fred and Serge have secured the, you know, six and seven spots respectively. And I kind of thought that Rondé was the number eight, but it seems like Matt Thomas is making a push for it because he is just an ungodly shooter. He's a, he's yeah. a denim God shooter. <laughs> the man wears no polyester and no, yeah. it's, it's nuts. Um, and I, I guess I've learned McCaw is injured and yeah. out which I, 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 which is pretty shitty because I think he brings some, some defensive qualities. But uh, and then obviously there's Terrence Davis. So 
who has the eighth spot in the rotation right now and, and who should is my question. Oh, uh, that's really hard because we have a lot of good dudes. I, I don't know. I think it would probably depend on matchup, but I mean, Chris Boucher is great. I don't know. After last night, I'm like, come on, can't they all go in? Like, let's put them all there. It's so but, feel um, good. Yeah. I love Terrence Davis. My only issue with him is that I feel like sometimes if he gets a few things wrong, it takes him down. Like it just weighs him down and he just yeah. like keeps doing wrong things uh, because he gets maybe stressed out in his mind or he, you know what I mean? He doesn't yeah, have the maturity the to move on from it. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I, I love him. Matt Thomas just seems like my just steady, but the problem with him is that I think everybody knows what he's going to do now. I mean, like by the time Milwaukee figured it out yesterday, they were all over him. Right. Which is good. You know what? If we could like use him as a decoy, have everybody be all over him and then at least like get some other shots up other places. That's great. But I don't know. Yeah, and I, he, he I, can make a couple plays too. Like Matt, Matt yeah. Thomas has shown some stuff as far as like he can make contested threes. You know, he's not a full on like yeah. Jason Capono type guy who needs to be alone in the corner. No, oh, I mean, like he, he was great <laughs> last night. He was, he, he really was good. He's real fast. I mean, like, whoo, damn. <laughs> That's the best description of Matt Thomas. It is he's like, real I fast. Asked, I mean, like, whoo. Ooh, damn. damn. <laughs> But I was like just kind of giggling at a certain point because he just was like running to certain spots. Give me the ball, give me the ball. I just thought it was really cute. He was like a kid yet last yeah. night. But, I, uh, um, I watched the Milwaukee broadcast. Um, oh, yeah. And the, the commentators would not stop saying that he was from a Wisconsin high school. Oh, wow. They're like, you know, he was awesome. In, in high school, <laughs> I mean, you know, he made it to the NBA. You can see he's quite good. Um, but yeah, wow. he was wicked at the. I, I think it was called. Like I feel like it's called Alaska. It's Alaska something. That's anyways. Yeah. So they mentioned the that about forty five times. Oh my god. Uh, well, you know what? Good for them. They have Matt Thomas and Cheese and I don't know what else. Harley's baby. That's right, Harley's. Uh, and the Brewers, um, <laughs> Adam. What, yeah. uh, what about you? Is there, I, I think nobody, I guess, is an acceptable answer or like it's situational, but who is the eighth and who should be? I think we got an eighth. I think it's either Rondé or Terrence Davis. On yeah. Situational. And I think maybe Terrence Davis and Rondé are both going to have kind of a leash on uh, how that they are playing. And um, there's going to be some heat check moments with Terrence Davis and it's going to be, you know, we're going to be matching a lot of what the other teams are going to be doing on mm-hmm. the court and, and stopping. So maybe if it's a defensive thing we put in Rondé, maybe if it's an offensive thing, Terrence Davis gets the nod. I can't see Matt Thomas really getting a lot of run in the playoffs. Like, you know, yeah. they, can, you know they can guard Giannis? <laughs> uh, I, like situationally. I, I, would say, I would think Chris Boucher would maybe play over you. Matt Thomas. I think I'm becoming a bit of a quiet Boucher stan. I just, I mean, I'm I not don't sure. I think them will play much, maybe like five minutes, but right. I think we'll probably run a nine man rotation in the playoffs. Yeah, I think so too. And, and I guess I'm kind of curious why exactly Rondé has so supplanted Boucher. I guess Boucher mm. is, isn't a good three point shooter. And I should remember that. So he Rondé doesn't. Well, neither is Rondé. My yeah, God. Rondé is like <laughs> dreadful. Like I think, I think just taking threes in this league matters. Like way going way back to culture reset with DeRozan, you know, even when he started shooting more threes, it gave our mm-hmm. offense more space. And you know that goes back to the Matt Thomas thing. Like the fact that he's out there running around and willing to shoot, he's just someone you have to account for. And yeah. and Boucher, like, not only is a willing shooter. I guess Rondé is a better defender, but Boucher really, he's got a lot of defensive abilities. Um, yeah. I don't and also the when it comes to like, Sorry. When it comes to the uh, difficult teams that we're going to be playing, which is like most likely Boston, Milwaukee, who are stifling defensive teams, especially Milwaukee, I don't think they're going to be afraid of Matt Thomas coming on the court. I think they're going to Oh, have, definitely not. I think not. Matt Thomas is just going to be taken under the 
Like it's just not going to happen. Can I counter that by saying, I think they will be terrified of Matt Thomas. <laughs> okay. Fair. <laughs> Very fair. I just think he's gonna come into the ring like like WCW Sting. So <laughs> that's part that's part of his contract. He's gonna be lowered and have a whole face paint thing. Wow. Uh, so I think I think folks will be scared. Oh, um, wow. But uh, Adam, let me keep it with you and uh, let's talk some. Uh, I mean, there's tons of awards, but <clears throat> let's talk some COY. Uh, looks like Billy Donovan. Um, uh, Coach Bud and Nick Nurse are the finalists. We know that the coaches had Nick in third. Uh, I'm not rude. sure. They, a rude, right? I'm not exactly sure of the weighting of it, but do you think it's a close race, Adam? Or do you feel like if Nurse doesn't win, he's robbed? No, so I think, um, I don't know. Here's the thing. <laughs> Coach of the year is dumb. And it's like this thing that's like, it's coach of the year to me is always just most improved team or like most unexpected good team, which is why like Billy Donovan's there and kind of why nurse is there. Cause you know, some people thought the Raptors were going to be bad. Right. I think if coach bud wins it over nurse, I wouldn't be that upset because they are, they did have a better record and they do have a better defense than we did. They also, mm -hmm. you know, they lost pieces too. Yep. Uh, not as big as Kawhi's. I think if it were up to me, I would pick Nurse. But I think if Coach Bud wins, I will. I won't be that upset. Also, Raptors are spoiled with Coach of the Years, so uh, and it's usually a cursed. So um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'd like Nurse to get it. Fair. Um, I think I'm. I think I'm in your camp. Uh, you know, everything the Raptors have been through, I do think is more impressive. Um, than what the Bucks have been through when you consider our injuries that, you know, kind of the fact that that nurse, you know, is, is seemingly considered as this like defensive savant right now. Mm -hmm. And our whole coaching staff is awesome, but I do think results are results and sure you can criticize bud, but the Bucks have been like a steam train. Mm -hmm. uh, they also lost Brogdon and they've just been destroying the NBA. So I think, yeah, they have Giannis, they have the MVP and likely the defensive player of the year. Um, and I do think that Nurse's resume is is more impressive. Uh, and it's kind of an interesting point you made as far as the curse, because I think if Nick does lose, he'll probably work even harder. Or maybe he won't. I, I don't know Nick's DNA, but yeah, Jess, I, I feel like maybe your energy is going to be more like Nurse is getting robbed. Yes? You know no? what? I... I also think it's kind of a dumb award because what what adam said is true it's basically like who is a surprise good team or you know along those lines however i wouldn't i don't have a problem if billy donovan wins i'd be like Ugh, okay that's cool but if bud wins, yeah, cool hair I'm like I just think, like, listen, you have Giannis. He's probably going to be the MVP again. He's probably going to be Defensive Player of the Year. I'm just like, you know what? Why is it surprising that that team is so good? They have mostly the same pieces as they did last year. So it's not like he had to get, like, crazy innovative and do a bunch of new shit with them. It's the same. I just, you know what? I don't know. I just don't no, like Bud. You know what? There's some, I just don't like Hey, him. that's he's okay. A, he's total. He is such a complainer. Listen, if you are are losing in a series and you complain about Drake, you know, I mean, Drake come on. you're an ultimate loser forever. Like yes. you just even if that bothers you, you're not allowed to complain about it. You're a coach and you're like, you're supposed to be like this like steely-eyed, you know, you're in the in the battle. The fact that you're like, we lost, but like I just want to say Drake's annoying. It's like, yeah. whoa, you're a ween. We're in your head and you're a ween. Yeah. Whereas on the on the other hand, Nick Nurse is over on the bench looking like one of those dolls where if you uh, tilt them over a certain way, their mouth uh, goes <laughs> open. And he plays guitar with the Arkells, the coolest yeah. band in the world. <laughs> You're damn right. I um, also think that Nurse probably doesn't give a shit whether he wins or not. Like, I don't think he cares at all. No. No, nurse is, nurse is too much of a badass. I, at this point, yeah. we realize that Nick definitely is is, is just a straight-up badass. Um, yeah. Well, I think yeah. 
I hate think this that's... award. Oh, sorry. No, go no, on. you go, you go. No, I was just saying, hate this award, hate the way it's, I don't know if this is an original thought, but I hate the way it's like most improved team. And the, the like the credit never goes to like the players when something like this mm-hmm. happens. Like the fact mm-hmm. that like, oh, Donovan did such a good job coaching those players. It's like, well, the team is sick. That team is great. <laughs> what about the players? Maybe they put yeah. in work during the off season. Maybe it wasn't just the schemes that they were in. Yeah. No, I do. I do think like a coach's impact is really kind of, you know, stripped down to what plays they're calling in a given important series when -hmm. the reality is like they're, you know, setting the development track, they're in charge of scouting. There's like such a year long, like a cumulative process. And, you know, in that respect, it does feel like giving a coach like Bud multiple awards for the regular season is a little bit like an over recognition of what he's accomplished, Mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is... Uh, I mean, maybe if they win everything this year, sure, I, I'd be like, okay, yeah, you can have it. But I'm just like, ugh. If they don't win and it's the same shit that they did last year and nothing's changed, then, like, why should you get that? Because you also got the most wins in the season that didn't mean anything? Yeah, and a, and a lot of these awards, I think, are pretty... Like, they're tiered. Like, what what yeah. was your job that year? Were you coaching... Um, Darius Garland and trying to be like, make sure he's good in two or three years mm-hmm. or, you know, the Sacramento Kings, or were you being like, okay, this is, I'm Steve Kerr and this is my first ever rebuilding year. So I got to make sure uh, Wiggins is ready for when Clay and <laughs> Steph are healthy. Like it's, it's interesting kind of like who, yeah, exactly. Who gets the credit for what? Should you know, Steve it, Kerr win coach of the year for taking a championship team to the bottom of the standings. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's going to have a shot at the first well overall pick. <laughs> yeah. Like, if, if you're thinking galaxy brain, Steve Kerr's like, oh, I'm not even in the bubble. <laughs> that's how well I'm playing. <laughs> um, okay, I think uh, that's basically it for, for raps, but I th- we have to talk about the the Chris Boucher dunk. Have we all oh, seen yeah. it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Jess, where, where, where's that for you? Is that the best bubble dunk? Is that Boucher's best dunk? He's had some, he's had he, some big highlights. He, didn't, he dunk on, didn't he dunk on LeBron or AD in the Laker game? He dunked on one of them. He blo- I know he blocked them both. He blocked a shot, but didn't he dunk on someone? Maybe I'm wrong. He has, he has a couple highlights in like the top 100. Uh, and I think they're blocks and dunks. So, so you I might mean, be right. he's... Yeah, I don't know. I uh, I loved it. I loved his face after he just like rolled. He rolled over on the floor and kind of smiled. I also because love like, when. Sorry. Go on. Oh, I was gonna say I love when you know there's like the social distancing thing, but like a huge yam from Boucher and like all the players explode off the bench, yeah. <laughs> screaming, yeah. and I'm like, oh my god, this is nuts. But I love it too. Like, yeah, yeah, also, it was great. The RJH uh, said that the, his assist was for his daughter. You guys heard that? that he said. Oh, yeah, that was so cute when he, he was mic'd up. up. Later, I don't know if you guys saw, but Chris Boucher said that the dunk was um, dedicated to the canceled Montreal Jazz Festival. <laughs> oh, my <God. laughs> oh, my God. That's what a nice, what a nice guy, because I know he does a lot of fundraising for Namur Station. <laughs> um, it's like it's a st- it's pretty far away from the downtown Montreal, but it's a station that needs a lot of work. It's deep underground, so. <laughs> um, and Snowden. Uh, he does a lot for Snowden. Whoa. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I've cruised a couple of Montreal lines. Let's say. <laughs> uh, rubber tracks, pretty quiet. No worries. Um, okay, sorry, Adam got me so jacked with the Montreal mm-hmm. reference there. Um, Let's see. Yeah, let's move on to some NBA. Um, Matt, if you got if you got an NBA sting for me, would you please, please give it to me, sir? National, National Basketball, Basketball Association. Association. I never know when this sting exactly ends, but I'm coming in hot. <laughs> I feel like it's pretty good timing. Um yeah, so uh, where did I want to start here? Uh, Jess, let's go to you. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, what, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to say 
the exactly, you know, the finalized um, playoff series in the West, but I think we're, we're getting, we're getting close. There's some pretty likely ones. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, yeah. Is there something you want to see in the West? It doesn't have to be in the first round, but you know, actually, no, let, let's actually keep it in the first round. Cause I don't want the stock answer of uh, LA versus LA. Um, oh, you yeah. won't get that answer from me regardless of round. Oh, great. Great. I love it. You know, I shouldn't <laughs> I'm have underestimated. So over it. I feel like they hype up every time they play. Like it's so hyped up. I feel like I've seen them play like eight times, Yeah. even though it's only been four. Um, but, uh, you know what? First of all, I'm really excited for the play in tournament. Like yeah. what a crazy thing. So yeah. So that's looking like it's going to be San Antonio or Portland versus Memphis likely or Phoenix Yeah, or Phoenix. Right. Yeah, Sorry. Phoenix. But yeah, cause the Pelicans, three teams are, Pelicans eliminated, are right? done. Yeah. Kings are out. done. Well, I guess Washington, Washington's pretty fun. <laughs> they should honestly let the Charlotte Hornets play in the plan tournament. I, I I've been saying from the beginning, if I was the Charlotte Hornets and I saw Washington and like the Kings made it, I'd be like, you guys suck. This sucks. Yeah. We They're tried a game really hard. And a half over the Washington Wizards, and they didn't play yeah. a game. They're they should be mad. Um, and they have some exciting players too. Uh, um, yeah, sorry. But in terms of like, uh, yeah, who's a matchup I would want to see? I don't know. I'll. I just really hate both LA teams. Like, I don't want any. I want them both to lose. I'd be happy with whoever <laughs> beats them. I. I'm so tired of the hype about them. I don't think, I just don't think they have it, to be honest. I think LeBron can get it done because he's LeBron. And, yeah. you know, the, he's, you know, this year, it like means more because of Kobe and all that stuff. But uh, I don't know, man. They played so bad. Their team's just meh. The Clippers are fine. <laughs> I'm loving all but, the LA hate. I, I feel like I opened up a Pandora's box and you're like, what matchups am I excited for in the West? How about none of the LA matchups? They can I go would to hell. Love, I would love like Portland to play LA to play the Lakers in the first round and like and cause kinda, a big upset. Like I do if think like that go for fifty yeah. every night. Oh man, that would be like a uh, chef's kiss. I mean, come on. Yeah, like even just like a, a, like just the whole situation with the pandemic. I think it would even be funny being like. Wow, Melo is guarding LeBron in a playoff yeah. series. This is saw, hilarious. Like I saw a meme and it was like the Raptors repeating a championship would be the most 2020 ending of this year ever. Totally. And I was it's, like, it's gonna yeah, happen. Let's do it. Um Adam, what's your what, what's your favorite series? And let me just guess, it's got to be the Rockets versus the Jazz. One more time. <laughs> I think Gobert can do it this time. Me too. I think you he's do? gonna. I, I think he's gonna shoot threes. No, God, Lord, no. Um, no, I hope that doesn't happen. I hope the Rockets play the the damn uh, the damn uh, uh, the o- Oklahoma City Thunder. I think that would be your. Oh yeah, uh, that'd be exciting as all hell. You oh, get yeah. a grudge match in the first round, you know? That yeah. would be amazing. But maybe Chris, in the second round, you'd get a, you'd get Portland beats LA, and then Portland would play uh, uh, the, the Thunder in the second round. Ooh. Second grudge match. Uh-hoo. Yeah. <gasps> this is good. Um, I don't know. I'm bored by... Uh, uh, I just hope it's not Utah and... Uh, the Nuggets, because I don't want to see either of those teams in the second round, frankly. I mean, the Nuggets are, like, cute, but oh, they're going to get smashed by whoever plays them in the second round. Yeah, you're not. You're not high. The, well, the Nuggets are actually, it's weird, because they're not exactly the team that they were all season. Like, is Murray playing? They have some He's big... playing. Oh, he is playing. Okay, I, I thought they had some, like, there's some late integration still, like because I know, like, um, Bledsoe for the Bucks. Uh, Montrezl for the um, Clippers and uh, and yeah, some of the guys for the Nuggets I thought were were coming in kind of late. I'm not sure, um, but yeah, they haven't looked super strong. No, in, in, I mean a lot of teams in the West haven't looked super strong. It's kind of weird because you're so excited for these matchups, but like as Jess was saying, like both LA teams don't look amazing. Like the Nuggets don't look incredible. Utah can never really get it done. It's like Houston's looking pretty good. 
Mm -hmm. Despite Robert Covington playing center, who is, I'd like to mention, two inches taller than I am. (laughs) If I were two inches taller, I could be playing center for the the Rockets. Rockets. And you would be. You'd be on the short list. I just know you would. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think the first round is going to – I'm, frankly, kind of more excited for the, the first round of the Eastern Conference. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think there's some, there's, there's going to be some fun heated battles. Like if we get, um, if we get Boston Philly, that would be exciting. Yeah. Even uh, without Ben Simmons, I think that's a good series. Totally. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, 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 I thought, I, I was, I thought one of you would go this way. Um, and maybe I'm overcompensating for being such a, or an early doubter, but I'm really excited to see Doncic in his first playoff series. Yeah. I'm excited to see how he gets scouted against. Like, is this mm-hmm. guy going to have a triple double? Like, is that his stats in the playoffs? You'd have to think no, right? Or yeah, he shoots a really low percentage. Or is Kawhi like, going, sorry, is go Kawhi going to dismantle him? He, you he know might. what? Yeah. I feel like he's going to just get, like, uh, his his soul will be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated because I think Dallas is also, they're pretty good. Like if the Raptors were going up against Dallas in the first round, I would be like, mm-hmm. shit, this is going to be oh, yeah. really hard for us to win a championship because we can beat this team, but it's going to be hard. Yeah. I mean, it would be a tough series. I think we could do it. Oh yeah. I think we can beat anybody. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, you know, I'm a hardcore Raptors fan and I've been saying that we're going back to back since we won the championship. So me too. I'm confident. You know what I'm most excited for? And I think is like, Probably what a lot of NBA fans are excited for is Boston Toronto round two. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like we, and, and you know, obviously we haven't brought it up, but everyone here knows I <laughs> criticized the shit out of Brad Stevens and, mm-hmm. and I hate Boston mm-hmm. and we got smacked. We yeah. got oh, yeah. smacked hard. And I know that, you know, we we're kind of past the Raptors talk now, but just for the listeners out there who think, you know, I, I'm trying to slide this pod in. With uh, with our bench beating the Milwaukee Bucks bench and being like, that's the only story. No, <laughs> yeah. no, we, we played everybody against Boston, and we got eviscerated. Uh, I do think that there's a bunch of offensive sets that Nurse hasn't used in the bubble and yeah. isn't going to use against any <clears throat> playoff opponent. Um, except you know, if we played the Nets, he might be like, this is what I'm gonna do. Can yeah. you stop yeah. it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I think regardless of all of that, kind of like all those little silver linings, we got beat so hard that yeah. it's noted. Like Boston was like, we're putting you on notice. Sure, don't run all your best sets, but we're going to humiliate you. So that is what it is. Yeah, and I heard Doris. Bur- oh, sorry. Go, go ahead, Jess. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say Doris. Doris, I want to hear. Doris Burke. Um, was on the low post and she was just saying how she was so confident in the, in the Raptors until that Boston game. And I was like, Oh, God, see, no. I'm, it doesn't, I didn't lose. know this, but we're, we're and three against Boston this season. We haven't beaten. Yeah, them. we are. <laughs> Did we not beat the, I thought we were one and two before this. No, like, I guess no we're Doris 0 and three. Son of a, um, no, you know what? Wait a minute. Didn't we beat them in Boston yeah, earlier in the season? We did. We did. Because I thought we beat them before the Christmas matchup. Yeah, we definitely did. And then they like wax our asses on Christmas. And then we lost again uh, the other night, which the event in which we speak. Mm-hmm. But um, you know what? I don't know. That game was just, I was like puzzled. The first, like when we went down, I don't know, when we were down 18, I was like, all right, I'm like pissed this is annoying. We're playing so bad. And then beyond that point, I was like, what's happening? What's going on here? Like, what the fuck am I even watching? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was I frustrating. That that. Obviously they were enjoying it. You know, Boston was loving doing that, but I have to say like, we were playing so bad. It was so, so bad. And I don't even like, I wouldn't credit all of it to what Boston was doing. We were just terrible in every aspect. So yeah, sure. If I'm them, I'm confident, but I don't think you need to be too confident. I mean, we're never going to play that bad twice in a row. (laughs) Yeah. And I think also we would have like leaned heavier on starters and, you know, nurse 
he's done a lot of like free flowing offense where he's like, if yeah. it's a good shot, take it, run some two man yeah. game. But I think in a, in a series type of scenario, he'll be more like, okay, so we're going to attack Kemba on every single play. Yeah. And I also stuff. think that the strategy of just like, you know, letting people shoot as many threes as they want and let's see what happens. It's that doesn't work with Boston. Yeah. So, yeah. For instance, we might need to like shore up the corner three. Um, yeah. Let's get, let's get back to some, uh, just, the the last NBA topic I have here, but um, I don't know. Well, let's let's go to you, Adam. Um, I don't know if you've looked through all the like awards finalists, uh, but yeah, is there anyone that you felt like should be in contention for something um, that doesn't seem to be on the list? I, if you want, I can do like a. You want me to do a quick read? I looked at it before the pod, and I thought they're pretty. I think they look pretty good. The only one that I would have liked to see is I would have liked to see Ben Simmons for Defensive Player of the Year, just because again I think Defensive Player of the Year also a dumb. Thing, and I have some. I did some research, everybody. Oh, pardon me, sir. Did, did you know? Can, can you guess the last guard in defensive player of the year? Sorry, you slowed <laughs> down right there, Adam. Did Did you say? Does anyone have a guess? The last oh, guard to can, win. Can, can defensive. I, yeah. Can, can anyone guess the last guard to win defensive player of the year? I'm going to go for it and say Gary Payton. Correct. Wow. Wow. Gary Payton in 1996. <laughs> Whoa. It's been 24 years since a guard has won. And then since then, I think out of the 24 years, only four of them have been forwards. It's like, wow. Exclusively an award that goes to a center who's like pretty good, gets a lot of blocks, gets a lot of rebounds. And, like, we have Anthony Davis and we have Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert, who's, like, the fucking, like, Meryl Streep of the Defensive Player of the Year category. It's, like, ah. he gets nominated or wins every year, despite, like, if you watched a single Utah Jazz. <laughs> um, and I would have liked to see Ben Simmons, because I think Ben Simmons is a great defensive player. And, the, um, you know, it would be nice to see a guard in there. Like, I think probably not Marcus Smart, but, you know, I'd like to see Simmons. Maybe over Gobert. Yeah, no, I think it's a it's a really good point. The NBA awards have fallen, I think, most of them into like you, you were talking about with Coach of the Year. It has to fit an exact narrative. Six man is a volume scorer mm-hmm. off of the mm-hmm. bench. Like if it's an Iguodala who's helping yeah. G State win seventy three wins, it's like nope, sorry, he's uh, six points, five rebounds, four assists. We we want a guy who gets thirteen points. Yeah, uh, on on a ninth place team, but and it's a testament to the like. I know it's like maybe the most boring thing to watch for in basketball, but no one cares. It's like perimeter defense is not sexy, and it's why mm-hmm. like guards don't win defense player of the year, and it's why the Raptors are like uh, no one talks about them as much as other teams. It's just not a sexy thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and our defensive squad. So I I don't know where the Lakers rank defensively, but we're number two. So we don't have a single candidate. Like OG can stop anybody. You know, Pascal's a free safety. Yeah, Gasol's like basically stands in one place the whole game, but somehow stops yeah. everybody all the time. Like he's Doctor Manhattan. But, but there's but there's no player who gets like 15 rebounds and four blocks. Like mm-hmm. we yeah. just don't have a player like that, and that's the kind of player that gets nominated. Yeah, it's and still like a on, vehicle. Like, TBD on whether any Raptors make the all defensive team. Like, like you were saying, we're second to the league. The Lakers are third, and it's like, man, it a Raptor might not get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just there's because more. We don't play. We don't have a sexy shot blocker on our team. Yeah, uh, Zach Lowe's talked a bunch about it, and the you know he'll talk to coaches, and people will be like, "Oh, it's it's Marcus Gasol. That's their best defensive player." And then other people will be like, "No, it's Fred," and someone else is yeah. like, "It's, it's Kyle." Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, Jess, like any of these awards kind of stick out to you, um, or is there is there a particular? I think Ben Simmons is a great example of some, and and you know we all focus on his offense, right? And people have kind of forgot that it's like pretty mm-hmm. early on in that Philly series he was the guy who was guarding Kawhi full time because yeah. no one else could even come close. Tobias Harris wasn't even up for consideration and Jimmy couldn't handle him just to size mm-hmm. what he was too slow and he was too, he wasn't as strong as Kawhi. And obviously Ben Simmons, you know, couldn't stop Kawhi, but he was the guy that um, 
was assigned to him. Uh, yeah, sorry, but Jess. Yeah, I agree on Ben Simmons. I, I also just, you know what, these awards, I would agree that they're really just like, what's another thing we can throw in just so people like watch and we can make money from advertising. Yeah. I think they're just so meaningless. Uh, also, I don't like how there's only like three nominees per category. You need to give me five. You hear that NBA? Jess is pissed. <laughs> I mean, especially if like we're talking about rookie of the year, like there's a lot of really good rookies and that there's only like they throw in three is just really annoying. Yeah, the, I'm pissed. Also, <laughs> you know what? If we're doing awards here, I think one that would mitigate the weird, like, <laughs> is this, is this person improved or not that award? Because I mean, if you're looking at just like raw stats, like, is it Doncic or was his first year too good? Like I, I would like if, if, if there was kind of like a rookie of the year award, a sophomore year of the war award. And then yeah. after that, there's a, that's where you can get into the most improved category stuff. Cause I think that there's so much movement in those first two years that it's weird when someone like Doncic is, is nominated for most improved. Um, but uh, you know what? Let's move on to something even more meaningless. Do you guys want to do some quickish questions? Wait, yeah. Wait, sorry, Adam's got. Wait, something. can I can I give you what one? Can, can I give you guys one cool Ben Simmons stat that I found on the internet? <laughs> Please. Okay, I'm sorry. If you've researched, give it to us, buddy. We need this. Okay, this is a tweet from Andrew Porter. Um, saw this on Reddit. Ben Simmons' five most defended players this season are Jimmy Butler, Jason Tatum, Bradley Beal, Pascal Siakam, and Shea Gildre, uh, Gildress Alexander. Those players have combined to score 50 points on 19 of 60 uh, shooting when guarded by Ben Simmons. Wow. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're one of those guys and you see Ben Simmons is guarding you, you're basically like, thank God it's not Matt Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> But then all the lights go off in the arena and Matt Thomas. Right. Yeah. Cause that's part of the oh. his rider. <laughs> oh. Yeah. He's good with the legal details. Like just cause there's a lot of action in the bubble and I don't know how he got that in, but he did. Um, that's, that's incredible. Yeah, and that's I think those are all like, yeah, like, you know, either established stars or guys coming up like, you know, Shea, Pascal and Tatum. Those are really, they score in completely different ways. So for him yeah. to be effective against all of them is, is really impressive. I would just give us five. Yeah. Give us five. Give us five. Even the Oscars give you five. I mean, the like, Oscars what is this? give you ten Three? best pictures for God's sake. Come on. Yeah, like you could pick as many as you. They're you're like, if they deserve to be there, we'll throw them in. Like this is just ridiculous. I and think. Also, the, I agree. Rudy Gobert does not need to be there every year. Yeah, and I think he the wasn't NBA good this year. The NBA has a lot to learn from the Oscars. Yeah, <laughs> if you think about it, like you know, yeah. Can you can you get to can you get defensive player of the year every single year if you bring your team to fourth in the West and exit in the first round? Yeah, because that's Rudy Gobert. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, COVID and like licked a mic. He's on the shit yeah. list. Oh, you know what? Adam's still frustrated at what you did, Rudy. This guy stinks. It's not okay. Um. Let's uh let's do some quickish questions. Mm -hmm. What do you say, buddies? Um, yeah. Matt, if you got that quickish question sting, I could tell <laughs> something's going on. So give it to me. Quickish question. <laughs> About a -da -da. Matt. You know, that's why you got to watch the Zoom. That the <laughs> whole segment was a performance. Yeah. Um, and it's top notch. Matt's not wearing a shirt. He's doing chin ups. It's getting wild. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, you both know it. Uh, you may or may not love it. This is quickish questions. I'm going to read the questions as clearly, uh, as stutter free as possible. Um, okay. No guarantees that it will make any sense. I might skip a comma not, you know, address a question mark, perhaps that doesn't matter. You can't phone a friend. You can't delay. You have to answer as quick as humanly possible. Uh, or, or, or else basically. <laughs> um, 
Adam, Jess, Matt, are we ready? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, we'll do it in that order. Um, Adam. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's do it. Okay. Quickish questions. Here we go. Adam. The West. Who will snatch the eight seed? I don't know. I haven't looked at the weird probabilities. Uh, Portland. <laughs> Jess. Will we see an upset in the first round? Who? Yes. An upset. And <laughs> yes, there will be an upset. I think it's going to be in the West. I can't specifically tell you who. I would have to see what the matchups are going to be by the end of this. But like, I, I, I'm feeling an upset. Okay. Do you guarantee an upset, Jeff? <laughs> Do we have you I on the guarantee. record? Guarantee. Okay, we got a guarantee. I'm Matt, writing this down. This guarantee. Yes. What was the correct amount of underwear to bring to the bubble? I think it's safe to go with 14 pairs, uh, and it depends on the laundry situation there. So start with 14, and if you have to get more shipped in, then um, call your mom. Love it. Adam, where does Fred yeah. rank in the all-time undrafted players? Here's some notable others. Uh, ben Wallace, Connie Hawkins, John Starks, Udonis Haslam, Bruce Bowen, Avery Johnson. I would say it's Ben Wallace is number one, and then there's a uh, you know seven-way tie for number two. Love it. <laughs> All Jess, great players. Who will win the West and why? Uh, I hate myself for this. Lakers. Oh! <laughs> and why? Or Houston. I could see either of those. And why? Honestly, I think LeBron, I don't know. There's such a motivation for him to do it. I feel like he might be able to win the West. Uh, I think Houston might be able to do it just by the fact that it's like, this is your year. Golden State is not a factor anymore. This is your time. You must do it. Okay, Matt. I don't know. Yes. How many games will it take the Raps to dispense of the Nets? Mm, I think... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Don't you phone a friend on me. It's You got to say a number. Six. What? Six? Adam. That's <laughs> the most controversial thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's nuts. Adam, who have been the top five players in the bubble so far? First of all, I want to say shame on the person who's, who asked the undrafted uh, question and didn't uh, uh, include uh, uh, Jose Manuel Calderon in that list. <laughs> uh, assist leader for the Toronto Raptors. Uh, I would say uh, TJ. I would say uh, uh, Devin Booker. I would say OG Ananobi. I would say uh, uh, I don't know who else has been good. Nobody on the Lakers. Nobody in the Clippers. We got our friend uh, uh, Austin Rivers I'm going to put in there. Mm -hmm. Love it. And fi finally, I'm going to say uh, Matt Thomas, and that's my five. That's my starting five, and that's my first team All-NBA. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, <laughs> who on our roster will be an All-Star for another team before their career is done? <gasps> oh, this is scandalous. Oh, this hurts my soul. Oh. Quick, quickest questions, you know? Another team? Fred. Ah. Fred, just, yeah, oh I would have said that too. Matt. Yes. Who else do you want to see beefing in Instagram comments? It's a reference to Paul George and, and Lillard going at it. Um, you know, it'd be really fun to see Kawhi come out of nowhere and <laughs> just get so into uh, like Instagram comment beef out of nowhere. Just it yeah. would add to the weirdness of this year. Come on, For Kawhi. Sure. Come on. Um, mm -hmm. Adam. Ready? Go ahead. <laughs> what weird? slash interesting things are the non-bubble teams doing right now? Oh, you know what everyone's getting? You know what I heard that uh, all Golden State doing? They're doing spike ball. <laughs> yep. I, I saw, I saw, I'm, I swear to God, I saw, I saw, I saw Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, 
and uh, I saw I saw another player for the Golden State Warriors. They were at Trinity at Bellwoods Park. They all had a neutral, and they were playing <laughs> fight ball with each other. And you know what? It was great. They got in the, in the way of uh, some slackliners from the um, yeah. That's no good. Chicago Bulls, but uh, yeah. I'm the type of guy. I don't even think slacklining's funny. I think you take it seriously, and it's it, it's, it's frustrating when people don't respect it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Jess, is Stanley Johnson okay? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> Oh my, no. Oh God. What's yeah. wrong with him? Correct answer. <laughs> Matt, are more people stepping out of bounds, particularly on corner threes slash drives from similar positions than they used to? Are more people than stepping they out used of bounds? To? Um, is this a trivia question? Yeah, it feels no, trivia like. It's just a general. Is, like, is there, uh, is that happening more? Are people noticing? Because I haven't really noticed that. Are they stepping out? Okay, I'm going to say no. Questioner? Matt and Matt didn't notice it. So I didn't next notice. Question. Uh, Adam, if someone is on fire, should the ball be on fire when they have the ball? Yes, absolutely. And to add on to Matt's question, I believe there should be no. Are you guys watching The Floor is Lava? I don't think there should be an out of bounds. I think if you go out of bounds. <laughs> You fall in a vat of like uh, colored water, and you should be, you're gone for the rest of the game. Oh, that's good. Wow. Your body disappears. Your body disappears. <laughs> that's good. Um, I mean, there's camera tricks. You don't actually drown, but yeah, you're for sure. Of, yeah, no, we'll be safe and everything. Um, and Matt Thomas was, will have that figured out as well because he's he, he's good with the pyro people already. <laughs> um, Jess, is there a team that possibly benefits the most from the no fans element? Uh, you know what? I would say, okay, Philly. However, they also will suffer from that because like a lot of their good play comes from their own fans. I think that's really going to be a struggle for them and they play horrible on the road. So, so I would say yes and no, because there's no actual home fans for the opposing team, but Bad for them because same reason for them. If any of those words made sense. Sure. Yeah. It's 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 uh, it's really good for Philly, but honestly, it's really bad for Philly. <laughs> yeah. And and Philly's falling apart. So cheers. Um, yeah. What about the Clippers? Win, they just can't win. Clippers could be good. It seems like there's some there's some stuff going on there. But, but like if it was what? like if they're playing if the Clippers are playing the Lakers, like then they don't have to deal That's with the true. Lakers fans in their own building. That's actually a great point. But then J.R. Smith's going to be like, who can I entertain? <laughs> Nobody? <laughs> yeah. um, I have a 360 layup that I was about to bust out. Um, okay, that, we'll, 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 we'll finish on this last question here. We'll make it an all play. Uh, Matt, starting with you. Yeah. Um, if you could add any Canadian player to the Raptors roster, who would it be? Mm. Any Canadian player, um, living and dead, sort current of. or non? Let's go current. Current okay. playing in the NBA. Um, stalling. He's Shea, stalling. <laughs> uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander. Is he Canadian? No. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Shea would be yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Um, Adam, you can't say Shea. What? Wow. That's hey, listen, because the follow up in the question. We said, all want Shea. <laughs> I'd personally grab blank. Oh, you know what? They didn't say Shay. Okay, fair enough. Whoa. I was going to say everyone's going to say Shay, but. Wait, who did they say? They said I'd personally uh, grab Brandon Clark and give him RHJ's minutes. Oh, well, that's the wrong answer. Because <laughs> you could get Shay. Brandon Clark? <laughs> He's pretty like, good. Well, I would take me, the center for the Houston Rockets. No, you know who I'd take? Uh, I'd take Jamal Murray, right? I think yeah. that's your number two. Hell yeah. Kelly Olenek, but, you know. Yeah. The- yeah, maybe not. Um, Kelly yeah. Although Kelly got fired from three the other game. Uh, Jess, who's your, which Canadian would you bring onto the Raptors roster? Okay, well, those were both my first and second choice. Uh huh. But I actually Sick. am going to go Olenek because he will sneakily play dirty, but not too dirty that it's not cool. Mm. I like it. Yeah, he'll be like, Lowry, I like the way that you blocked Aaron <laughs> Gordon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, he'll be like our Reggie Evans, and he'll play so well that uh, the Raptors fans will demand that we sign him. 
for a one hundred twenty million dollar contract. Uh, I wish yeah. we, I wish we still had Reggie Evans on contract, man. <laughs> he, right, he'd be perfect right now. He'd be forty three. Um, everything, everything would be great. I wish uh, I could see everyone online who uh, wanted Reggie Evans back from that one year, and I wish that they could all be banished from the internet. Yeah, for sure. Um, one of them would be me. Um, really? And another one would be Reggie Evans. And he'd have something yeah. to say about being banned from the internet because his Tumblr is popular. Wow. Oh. Um, Tumblr is still popular at all? <laughs> I, I don't think it is, but for Reggie Evans, it probably is. Wait, can I ask you guys, can I ask you guys a, qu- a quick question? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so let's finish it off on an on a Adam quickish cue. Jess, Freddie, Matt, do you think Draymond Green, when he retires, should be on Inside the NBA? Are you oh, liking yeah. Draymond or are you disliking Draymond? I love it. Yeah. I like Draymond. Yeah. I think that right now he's a player. So his takes are like wrapped up in how good he thinks he is. But I think as he becomes more of a TV guy and gets to hang out with people like Barkley, who are like, I'm so much better than you. My career Mm -hmm. was so much better than you. I think he can blend in to be like once he gets once he gets some kind of like humble pie and be like oh you're a champion you're amazing but like you'll never be in the category of like top NBA players because um, I think he does have a like too much swagger. Could be in the Hall of Fame though. Yeah, no, he's like he's he's an amazing amazing player, but but you know what I mean. He has he has certain energies that are a little bit like okay, buddy, you're not LeBron. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I yes, think he's uh... entertaining. Uh, yeah, I agree. Sorry, I didn't answer, but I will say that I think he's a great personality, and I hope that he would lean into, you know, some of the uh, things he w- he was known for in his career, like uh, the kicking and stuff. I don't know. You can, you know, bring Steve Owen and kick him in the nuts or something. You know, like I want to, I want to yeah. <laughs> split a Wait, split Steve a watermelon in half. Steve O. Steve O. Is there a Steve O. reference in the pod? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just someone um, who likes to get kicked in the nuts or something. All jokes aside, everyone, everyone check out Jackass season one. Um, <laughs> Steve was paid uh, a total of two thousand dollars for his stunts. <laughs> yeah, um, it's true. Wait, is that true? Yeah, I know he yeah, got. He made that, nothing. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure, but a, a bunch of stuff came out that like. Yeah. A lot people didn't make good money early. <laughs> no, early it's brutal. Jackass days. Um, Jess, do you have any? Do you have any Jackass or Steve O takes? <laughs> No, I don't. You know what? I didn't watch that show. I'm sorry. If you want me to give you all my brothers' his phone numbers, it was probably just what I'm going to say. Have you seen any of the movies? That she didn't watch the show. Jess's take sorry. is that call my brothers. They will tell you. But um, in terms of Draymond, yeah, I think he is doing a pretty good job considering he does have to keep what he says to a degree of censorship like uh i mean even what he said about devin booker the other day and he got fined i mean i think now he's gonna have to be even more careful which kind of sucks but it'd be nice after he retires to just have him like a totally like loose a let loose draymond green i think Mm -hmm. is gonna be hilarious yeah and like you know i feel like i i I feel bad i feel like i overly criticized how, how good draymond is but you know what i mean where it's like kind of like like i feel like he'll end up having like could end up having like Reggie Miller energy, which is like, I was an amazing player, but not like, you know, Shaq, for instance. No. Um, but, uh, you know, all that scrutiny aside, he's a wicked defensive player, amazing IQ. He'll be a great, uh, he'll be a great NOS. And he's pretty funny yeah. too. Uh-huh. He is. He can be funny. But that, that's, that brings us to the end of the pod, uh, buddies. Um, Adam, uh, you're up first. You know the drill during COVID. Uh, if you if, do you have anything going on, do you have anything you want to promote? If you don't, that's okay. Yeah, I I mean I was on the pod three months ago, and my answer is still no. Good. <laughs> yep. Yeah, stick stick to it. Yep. Um, Jess, what's up? Do you do you have anything going on? Do you want to do you want to say anything to the world? Uh, also, no, I have nothing. <laughs> you hear that, folks? Anyone listening to this pod, we don't have anything. Okay? <laughs> we ain't got shit. <laughs> Hello. Can anyone around here speak basketball? There it is. It's, it's the, the Confederacy, Confederacy of Dunks, of Dunks basketball, basketball Podcast. podcast.